In this video, we're going to look into how you can measure the crop height from the drone images and different ways of doing it. Uh, but first, how is it even possible to measure the height from just the images? Because it sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? Well, when uh, images are stitched in Solvi, they are run through a photogrammetry pipeline. And before creating the ortho mosaic, the map of the field, uh, we actually create a 3D point cloud so that uh, different angles of the cameras can be taken into consideration and uh, you get uh, a true top-down perspective in the maps. So let's have a look at uh, one of such examples. Uh, so this is a top-down perspective of a field trial, but if we uh, zoom in, uh, we can see that actually behind the scenes there is a 3D point cloud. And if we zoom in, we can see all the dots that this point cloud <coughs> consists of. We can also see that uh, the plots here with the crops stand out. Uh, it's pretty. Uh, clear as we pan through this uh, field trial. Uh, so during this process, uh, we reconstruct this 3D point cloud and from that we create something called uh, elevation map or uh, DSM. And uh, let's have a look at uh, actually a few terms here before we uh, go further, because th those are really um, <coughs> crucial to understand. So there are a few terms to dive into here. There is a DSM, uh, which stands for D digital surface model. There is a DTM, digital terrain model, and there is a CHM, canopy height model. So DSM essentially uh, is the whole uh, surface of the earth or a specific field that you're flying over, including all the objects on top of it. So it can be trees, it can be buildings, it can be everything. Uh, DTM only represent the terrain, just the ground without any objects on top of it. Now to measure the height, uh, we want to focus just on the height of the crops without all these different possible variations in the elevation, right? So that's where the CHM comes in. So by subtracting DTM from DSM, uh, we actually get the canopy height model, which actually just represents uh, the height of the crops um, as if the surface uh, that the crops are grown on uh, would be completely uh, flat. All right, so now let's look into one of the examples. So here we have a wind to wheat trial flown at late growth stage, uh, where it would be interesting to measure the height of the crops as one of the variables, for example, for yield estimates. Uh, let's have a look at how the elevation uh, map looks like. Uh, so this is a DSM, digital surface model. And we can see that even uh, though the area of this field trial is quite small, just over one hectare, there are some clear differences in the elevation. So dark red areas here show uh, parts with high elevation, around 54 uh, meters above sea level, while blue areas here at the bottom show areas with low elevation. <clears throat> there are roughly three meters difference between the highest and lowest point. Uh, now, if we were just uh, assume uh, uh, one of the these elevation numbers as a ground level and measure height from it, it wouldn't be that accurate. So we need to somehow take into consideration these differences in, in the terrain elevation. Uh, and if we head over to the zonal statistics tool, uh, there are different ways of doing it. So the first one is in cases like this in field trials where there are some uh, very clear gaps between uh, the plots, uh, we can actually let the tool figure out itself uh, what the ground level outside of each plot is uh, and then measure the height from it. And uh, the way it works is that uh, it will buffer each plot by a small area and then find the lowest point outside of each plot and, and uh, then do the height measurements. Uh, there is a second option, uh, ground inside the zone, inside each plot. So that's mostly for field trials uh, where the crops are planted on raised beds, usually in vegetable trials, uh, where you don't want to, uh, the height of the beds be taken into uh, calculation. So then the tool will look for the lowest level inside of each plot. Now, in many cases, uh, the ground level is not always visible, for example, in corn trials in late growth stages, or at least not visible across the whole field trial. So this uh, automatic height measurements might not be very accurate across the whole field. Uh, so that's where the canopy height model comes in. And uh, the way it works is that we provide a few reference set points uh, in different parts of the uh, trial where the uh, ground level is visible and the elevation data, data is then interpolated between uh, these points uh, and uh, the canopy height model is created. So let's have a look at how it works. If we head over to the elevation tool, uh, here we have an option to create the canopy height model. And uh, there are different ways uh, to do that. Um, the first one is to actually use the digital material model if it's available. I will show how it works in a few seconds. Uh, the second way is to create the canopy height model from uh, the reference point. So if we click over here and zoom in a little bit, uh, we essentially uh, then uh, just need to uh, place these reference points uh, where the ground level is visible 
and we want to place them uh, quite frequently uh, so that we get the true representation of the elevation profile of the field. Um, so let's click a few here. <clears throat> and we definitely want to place those points uh, in parts where the elevation uh, actually changes. So at least four points is required, but the more points we get, the better the accuracy will be. Uh, and once you've done that, we just click create canopy height model. Now the canopy height model uh, is created and it automatically loaded here. And we can see that now the higher part, northern part of this field is no longer completely red. Uh, there are still, so still some red parts uh, here. So we might want to refine the canopy height model and add a few more reference points in these places. Uh, but we can see that uh, the, uh, the elevation map now looks uh, much more even across the, the field. And we, if we now head over to the zonal statistics tool, uh, we will get this new option here to use the canopy height model to do the calculations. Uh, and now if we switch back over to the canopy height model, we can see that essentially now the lowest point is zero. So the height calculations will be done essentially just from this point. Now let's have a look at another example here, which is a little bit more uh, tricky. It's a corn field trial flown uh, late in the season. Uh, on 21st of August uh, in much later growth stage where the uh, canopy is much more denser. <clears throat> and if we toggle on the elevation uh, map here, we can uh, uh, see that there are clearly some differences in elevation across the field. But if we were to use the previous method uh, with putting out some reference points somewhere here, maybe here or here, we would likely not get very accurate results just because in larger parts of the field, the uh, uh, ground level is not very well visible. Uh, now, this uh, trial was flown multiple times during the season, uh, as early as 6th of March. And uh, we actually have here a DTM, so an elevation map that represents the uh, the ground level of the field trial. If we switch over to uh, this map over here, uh, we can see uh, this early stage flight where the crops just emerged. And although we see some vegetation here, we have uh, plenty of data here around the crops uh, representing digital terrain model. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can uh, see that it kind of uh, uh, reflects the same differences in elevation. We have part here with higher values and part over here with lower values. So uh, to create a canopy height model uh, from this elevation map, uh, we would simply go to the elevation tool again, uh, click create canopy height model, and then choose this first option. Uh, and then we'll simply just select a file. So a GOT with uh, elevation model from the previous flight and uh, just hit upload here. And as soon as uh, the file is uploaded, uh, the tool will automatically subtract this DTM from the DSM uh, from the uh, later growth stage flight and the canopy height model will be created. Now, one really important thing here to uh, take into account that in order to use this approach, uh, you need to uh, fly both dates with a uh, RTK drone or use ground control points merged with RTK uh, ground stations so that the uh, elevation values, the absolute elevation values above sea level that uh, are recorded uh, match uh, each other uh, well. And now the canopy height model is generated and we can see that it looks very different from uh, the previous DSM. Uh, so the field now is evened out using the digital terrain model and uh, the different colors here uh, actually represent uh, the different uh, height of the crops uh, and not height of terrain. Uh, so now it's just a matter of heading over to the zonal statistics tool back again, uh, choosing this canopy height model for height calculations and clicking calculate statistics button to get the height measurements. That's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you have any questions, uh, just leave the command below. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.